Hi, I'm Matt Johnson, and this is my third video in three-part series on building your own elements for outdoor Christmas light show. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build this pixel matrix from materials that are readily available at your local hardware store. The pixel matrix has provided perhaps the greatest visual impact for the cost over any other element within my light show. It really is only comprised of two components. The first being 200 PSI PVC pipe. This is the cheapest pipe you can buy at the hardware store and is only about $1.50 for an eight foot length. The second component is 1 16th inch steel wire rope. This holds the pipe together and creates each of the different rows. In my matrix, I have 30 PVC pipes creating 30 rows. Each row has 34 pixels in the row, and each row is 70 inches long. While creating the pixel matrix is relatively simple, it does require quite a bit of precision. It's imperative that all of the pixels are evenly spaced and that all of the columns in each row line up exactly. In order to do that, I've created a series of jigs to help make sure that the alignment between rows is exact. The first jig that I created in order to ensure precision between each of the pipes that comprise each row was this jig. I cut three pieces of MDF wood on my table saw and stapled them together. I put a block on one side and left the other side open. I then took the raw piece of PVC pipe, stuck it into the jig and pushed it all the way against the block on one side. On the other side, I cut the pipe flush with the end of the jig. The actual jig that was used in creating this matrix in these rows here was exactly the length of the pipe. But for the purpose of this video, I'm showing with a shorter jig. But the design was the exact same. It just ensures that when the pipe is pushed against one side and the other side is cut flush, that all pipes will be the exact same length, which is critical in making sure that all of our pixel columns line up. The second jig that I created is this jig here that allows each hole to be evenly spaced along the row. The way that I did it is similar to the first jig by creating some pieces on the table saw and gluing them and nailing them together in a U-shape so that the pipe fits in the channel. Then I added this post here that will go through the hole in the pipe to line up the next hole exactly where this line is on the channel. An example of this would be When this is mounted on the table or on the drill press, the post goes through this hole, which then aligns this line for the drilling of the second hole. Once that's drilled, I just move it one hole at a time and drill the next hole. Then I move it one more time and drill the next hole. And I continue this process until I've gone the length of the entire pipe. Once I'm done, I can be assured that every hole is evenly spaced. The last jig that I created for creating the rows is this jig here. It's very similar to the second jig that I used for determining the spacing on each of the holes. But what it's for is twofold. The first is after I'm done drilling the 34 holes in each row, I'm going to have extra that needs to be cut off. I need to make sure that the distance between the last hole and where it's cut is the exact same on both sides of the pipe. This will ensure that the pipe can be flipped either direction in the assembly process and still guarantee that the first and last holes are always in the exact location. 
So in order to use this jig, you stick the pipe in, in the very last hole, and just imagine this pipe goes all the way out here. And wherever the end is, that's where you mark and cut that pipe. You would then flip the pipe over. So let's say you just cut this one. You'd flip it over and make sure that you do it on the second one as well. And you can see here on this finished pipe, it's completely flush. To cut this on the end, you could easily use a hacksaw, but I used a power miter saw just to make things a little bit simpler. The second purpose of this jig is to drill the hole that will be used by the rope cable to tie all of the rows together. Again, it's very important that this hole, as you can see on this pipe, is at the same distance on every piece of pipe and is preferably symmetrical on both ends of the pipe so that they can be flipped in assembly as well. A third hole is placed directly in the middle of the pipe and in order to get the spacing for that one, I just always use the jig on the third hole from the center and then that lined up directly in between these two pixel holes which represents the center of my matrix. So now I'm going to show you an example of the process that I use to join the rows together. I'll then cut away and show you some video of my kids doing the actual matrix that is on the front of my house at the current time. The first step that I do is determine the distance that each of the pipes has to be away from each other in order to form a perfect square. You can see here the pixel distance between each other needs to match the distance this way as well vertically so it creates a perfect square. If you don't do that then when you do certain effects like scrolling text, the text will look elongated. So in order to get that distance, I determined how far I wanted them apart when I created the jig. So now I just needed to figure out what size of a spacer I would need to go between them to give me that exact same measurement. In this case, I purchased the spacers already at the size I needed, but you could just as easily put together anything that would make the correct spacing for you. I purchased these spacers from McMaster Car. So the first step in joining the rows together is to take the wire rope, slide it through the holes that we created with the jig, and then add the spacer on the wire rope. Then simply thread that through the next row. Can sometimes be difficult. And then squeeze the two together. You now continue to do this for as many rows as you have within your matrix. Finally, at the very end, I will take a ferrule stop and I will thread it over 
and then back through to create a loop. Once the loop is created, I will use my feral crimpers and I will crimp that tight. I'll then pull the rope and do the same thing on the other side so it creates a very tight bond between all of the rows. These feral stops are very cheap, available through Lowe's or Home Depot, as is the wire and the pipe. And that's the last step in creating the matrix. So once you've finished constructing the matrix, the last step is to put the pixels into each of the holes. I use these pixels, which are a bullet type pixel. I purchased them from Ray Wu. And by using one inch thick PVC pipe, it's the perfect size to fit through the pipe in such a way that it both sticks out the front and secures in the back. And I'll show you what I mean by that. I begin by pressing in the back and then as it comes out the front, I let the back part go all the way through and once it's gone all the way through it kind of gets stuck so that you can't pull it back out. In order to pull it out you have to line it up perfectly to the hole and when you have all of these pixels in the holes it's very unlikely that it will be able to get lined up just right so it stays in without any problem. So you can see I've got two of them put in right there, pushed in. And on the back you can see what it looks like. You'd be surprised at how well this actually works. And once you have all the strands in and all the pixels in, they're very secure and they don't pop out. And it looks really good at night. The last step would be to wire it. You need a controller in order to run these pixels. The controller that I use is a SAN Devices E682 and it works very well. If your fingers start to get raw from pressing in so many of these pixels, you can always wear gloves. It is a tedious process, but the end result is well worth it. Well that concludes the construction of the pixel matrix. This is one of my favorite elements and I hope you enjoy it too. It really is not that expensive to build and you get a lot of bang for the buck by building it. This also concludes my three-part series on building your own elements for a Christmas light show. I hope you've enjoyed the series and if you haven't already, take a look at the first and second videos on building a leaping light arch and building a pixel Christmas tree. Thank you for watching.